Hello everyone and welcome to the second video on data analysis. Uh, on the first video we ended up here calculating all the values for the process data table and now on your internal assessment and on your laboratory work during the school year we need to show these uh, tables and we need to number the tables table 1 and table 2 with a brief description raw data table and process data table. And after the process of the table, we need to show examples of calculations. What is this? Uh, for example, you choose any row. Let's say this row here. And you need to show how you calculated these values. 2.5, 0.2, 6.1, and 0.7. So we only need to show one example. Don't show examples for all these. No, only for one in each row. And now the next step which is the one we are all waiting for graphical analysis we need to catch or we need to draw a graph uh, to draw a graph we need what we're going to draw on the y-axis and what we're going to draw on the x-axis and that depends on our equation here we see v square will be our y-axis and r the radius will be our x-axis in the equation of a straight line we usually want to sketch straight lines, so even if the raw data or, or the first process data doesn't give you a straight line, we should uh, manipulate the equations until we get a straight line. And uh, here we see the straight line we should get with zero y-intercept. So in our experiment, we do not expect y-intercept. But uh, as you will see in experiment, there's always some uncertainties and probably we'll have a small y intercept. Who so knows? Let's see what we can do. So, how to do this? Well, this is graphical analysis. How to uh, draw a graph and how to do the full treatment. We just go to our process data table, copy the x values. So, this is just copy paste. The graphical analysis, first column is radius second column is v square we want y axis here so you see x and y and now you'll see the values are very 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 close to the y axis so probably the first step we need to do is just out of scale you come here out of you can do this manually let me show you you can just drag the zero and i'll oops Sorry about that. This was not what I was trying to show. This is what I'm trying to show. We can do this manually, so we can drag the scale, or we can just out of scale. And you have the values here uh, evenly dis distributed to the whole screen. Even this one here is a little bit off, so now we can just manually adjust it, even in Y if you want. So something like this would be fine. Make sure the, um, the dots occupy the full space in the graph. Okay, what else do we need? Let's give name and title to the graph. So we come here to the X axis, right click, column options, uh, X axis radius, uh, units is meters, and now we're gonna choose our error bar. So we gave the names, the units, <clears throat> sorry, and now we're gonna choose or define our error bars. How do we do this? This radius, if you remember, let's go back. We have the same uncertainty for all values, 0 0.01, so we just go there. Error constant, plus or minus 0 0.01. And done. And here we have. We have our, our uh, radius, you can see here on the bottom, radius in meters, and the error bar. Let's do the same for y. Options, dot set y. Um, this is, let's call it speed squared, average speed squared if you want. Average speed squared. Units, meters per second. And now let's 
define <coughs> our error bar. But now we have a problem because the absolute uncertainty for the square of the speed is different for each measurement, which means we can not just write any number here, 0 0.1, because this is not correct. So how to do this? Let's first go back. So this is already given. Okay, I don't know why this is not lacking. Please retype the error constant. Yes, I don't want anything. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but it worked. So average speed squared. Uh, sorry about this. This is squared, average speed squared. This should be unit meter squared per second squared. Okay. Now, how to set the, um, the absolute uncertainty that we see on the table, how to set one different value for each measurement? We just go here to data, we go to a new manual column, or new manual column, and then now we can call it, let's just call it absolute uncertainty. This will not show, anyway, uh, this will not show on our final, final work. It's just to guide us, so absolute uncertainty. Now we'll see, we created a new column here. And we go back to our Excel, copy the values of absolute uncertainty on the speed, on the square of the speed, sorry. And we paste it here. And now we'll do it again. Column options, average speed squared, options, error bar calculations. But now instead of an error constant, we'll just use the column that we pasted. That will be absolute uncertainty. And you will see now how each value, look at the uncertainty of this one, is smaller than this one, for example. So everything is uh, fixed. So this is the first steps, um, values and title of the axis, the unit, with the correct units, hopefully, error bars. And now let's sketch our line of best fit. So we go analyze, linear fit, we know it's a linear fit anyway. And we see our, let's just edit this. So one problem that we usually see in the, um, in the internal assessment in the final work is, is these uh, squares are so small that we can barely read them. So it's good, you can come here, appearance, and change the size until some size is young. you are comfortable to read. And, uh, and basically that's it. So this is just our first step for our line of back speed. So it passes through the error bars. Everything seems OK. We are given the gradient, the slope, 20.86, and the y-intercept. As we mentioned before, this is not, this is not uh, 0. It has some, some value, which probably comes from systematic error. OK, we have the line of back speed. Now we need to, uh, to treat this. The data. How do we do this? Uh, the, most of the guides, even our books for ID, they advise to use the lines of maximum and the minimum gradient. And how, how do we do that in graphical analysis? We can also do it in Excel. But graphical analysis usually is more practical or easier to use. So we come here to analyze the uh, model. And we choose an x plus b, which is which is a straight line, and we just click OK. And now here is our oops, our equation for straight line. Again, it's a bit small. Let's just increase maybe eleven, and let's change the color so each line has a different color. Let's choose blue. You can choose the color you want, obviously. So let's choose blue, and now let's do some trick, which is enable line drag. I'm going to select here. When you select enable 
line drag, you will see these symbols. So the symbol in the center, we can just move the line up and down parallel to itself. These ones, we can just adjust the gradient of the line. I'm going to use this to sketch, uh, for example, let's sketch the maximum gradient. There are a few ways to do it, even in different places. You can use the vertical error bars, you can use the horizontal bars, or you can use the um, kind of a box that you see here. What is that? So these two bars, imagine they define a rectangle, that is a rectangle. And let's, for example, make the line of maximum gradient pass on this corner, this imaginary corner, something like this. Okay, so this will be where these two lines meet, this rectangle here, and on the lowest bell will do the same, so approximately. This is the line of maximum gradient. Now let's insert line of minimum gradient. We'll repeat model, linear, right here we'll do the same appearance change the color let's choose another color i don't know maybe green and again uh, let me just do something here let's just go to this and disable elaine enable line drag and now let's show here enable line drag and do the same but for our minimum. So now we choose the opposite corner. Or you can use the error bar. And that's it. Approximately pass it here on this corner, maybe a little bit. All right, now let's rearrange here. We have the equations for each line. Let's disable line drag. All good. So what do we have now? We have the slope or the gradient of each line, of the best fit line, of the maximum gradient, of the minimum gradient, and the now oh, this one looks a little bit off. Okay. Well, you'll do you'll do this more precise when you do your work. Enable. Okay. Now, uh, what do we need to do? We finish our <clears throat> our work in graphical analysis. We need to take this graph to Word. You can, uh, if you want to screen screenshot, you can do it. But then just cut the graph on Paint, for example, or any other editor. Or even easier, you can just uh, copy paste, control C. This will only copy the graph. Now we'll go to Microsoft Word and paste the graph where we should. Let's paste it here. So everything looks colorful, everything looks beautiful. This is how we want it. If you think you need some extra format, you can give it here, make it a little bit darker, maybe, or a little bit. Uh, sharpen it a little bit don't forget we need a title with a brief description and then uh, what do we do with this so most of the times in physics we want to calculate the gradient the gradient is 20.86 let's write here gradient 20.86 is meter, seconds, meter square per second square and the uncertainty in the gradient. If you remember our lessons in the first topic, in topic one, one way to estimate the uncertainty in the gradient is with this formula. So the uncertainty in the gradient, I'm calling k to the gradient. Let's put it here so we don't use. It's just a maximum gradient minus the minimum divided by two. So if we go to the graphs, maximum is the blue line is 20.06. 20.06 minus 18.47, the green, and we have 1.69. Uh, 
So this uncertainty in the gradient is equal to, if you calculate this formula, 1.59. Now, this is an uncertainty, which means we need only one significant sigma. So this rounds up to two. And finally, we can write the final result for the gradient. One, sorry, no, that's no places, one significant figure. We need to round up to this one. No, that's no place. So it will be 21 plus or minus two. So this is in the proper units of your graph. This will be a look, this will have some units. And now what do we do with this? This is the gradient. We can go back to our formula. We see the gradient here. Remember, if you watched the first video, one of the objectives is to determine the little mass m. In this experiment, we know the mass that is hanging. We know g. We don't know m. And now we use mg divided by m is equal to the gradient that we determined. All these values have uncertainties. So the value that you will find out in your experiment, as I said, it can be adapted to any experiment. This will just be, I don't know, uh, let's say 135 grams, plus or minus. And you will have this value here, which is the uncertainty in the mass. You have to calculate using the rules for uncertainty. You have to calculate it from here. And that's it. So we'll present this final result. If you need, uh, depends on what you're doing, of course. This is just a guide, a general guide in units gram, for example. And, um, and that's it. So email me if you have any questions. Uh, and if not, see you all soon. Bye-bye.